Welcome to the show with everything you could ever want to make and do. Right to your fingertips. I'm Naomi. I'm Stephen. And here's what's coming up on today's show. We show you how to make a game of Rocket Launch Pad. It's guaranteed to test your nerves. Revamp your manky old pens into these fantastic pucker pens. And with a slice of bread, a bottle top, a lolly stick and clean fingertips, what can Naomi make in under a minute? And for all the details on today's makes, you can look on our website, address at the end of the show. Or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Mmm, chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate, plain chocolate. I love chocolate. Yeah, and how tasty do these look? Ooh, almost too good to eat. This is the Fingertips Everlasting Chocolate Box, a tempting selection of chocolates on the outside, hiding a delicious stack of truffles on the inside. Mm. Are you going to help make them or just eat them? Eat them. No, make them. I'll make the edible truffles to go on the inside. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I will make the Everlasting Chocolates that go on the outside. Now, we give the Everlasting Chocolate Box a Fingertips difficulty rating of three. To make the edible truffles, you're going to need chocolate chunks, milk, plain or white, it's up to you, softened butter, digestive biscuits, sieved icing sugar and some cocoa powder for dusting. We'll give you the quantities as we go along. Start by crushing 100 grams of digestive biscuits. The easiest way to do this is to put them into a bag and use a rolling pin to bash them up. And now it's time to make some more chocolates. Right, thank you. Yeah. The everlasting variety that go on top of the box. Now, to make these, you need some polystyrene balls, truffle size, like this one here, and also some acrylic paint. Now, get yourself a skewer and just push it into your ball. And for different flavoured chocolates, we're going to use different coloured paints. Now, we've got a creamy colour for white chocolate, also a light brown for milk chocolate, and a dark brown for dark chocolate. And this is the fun bit. All you do is roll the ball around the paint like that. Just keep rolling it in. And keep going until the ball is completely covered like that. And a fingertips top tip is just place it into a mug and leave it to dry. If you're making the edible truffles, once you've crushed your biscuits, leave them to one side because it's time to melt the chocolate. Put 175 grams of broken up chocolate into a large microwavable bowl and then melt it in the microwave, taking it out to give it a bit of a stir every now and again. And when it's melted, it's time to add your other ingredients. So fold in 50 grams of softened butter and 50 grams of icing sugar. Pop those in with the chocolate, which is smelling lovely. Yummy. And also add your crushed digestive biscuits. Pour those in. And then give it all a good mix. And then pop it into the fridge for about 10 minutes so it chills. Keep going, Naomi. Go on, keep going. <laughs> now, when your everlasting chocolates are dry, you can add some toppings to make them look good enough to eat. And for this, you need a fabric pen. And I'm going to give this one a pink candy topping. You can use any paint you like, but we find that fabric paints work really, really well. Just go all the way around like that. And then pop it back into your mug and leave that to dry. Very nice, Stevie. Now, once all your ingredients are mixed in, you need to take about a teaspoon size of the mixture and you need to press this into a truffle shape. And you can either roll it in the palm of your hand or on a chopping board, whichever is easiest. And then roll your truffle in a plate of cocoa powder to give it that real truffly look. And then finally pop it into one of these little truffle cases. And your mixture should make about 16 truffles. 
Now you can give your everlasting chocolates any toppings you like. We've also covered them with some acrylic varnish to give them a nice shiny finish. And this one is just wrapped in gold foil. You want to stick them to a piece of card or like we have a piece of foam and we've gone round the edge with some more fabric paint just for added decoration. Then you want to stick it to your box. Any box will do as long as it has a lid that opens at the top. And now you're ready for the edible truffles to go on the inside. Here they are. Okay, we'll pop those in there. Oh, perfect. As good as you get in any shop and just as tasty. Absolutely. Now, the Everlasting Chocolate Box is a brilliant present for anyone. Mm, look at all these. You could pile your Everlasting Chocolates up high, cover them with coloured wrappers, or even make some pastel coloured bonbons. They look good enough to eat. So why don't you give it a go and make an Everlasting Chocolate Box. Everlasting Chocolates on the outside. With edible truffles on the inside. Mmm. Fingertips top tip. Squash all the air out of a plastic bottle. Put the lid back on and you'll find it much easier to cut the bottle in half. The Fun Fingertips Launch Pad. Fun to make and fun to play, if your heart can take it. Hey! This is my favourite Fun Fingertips. I think you're going to love it. The aim of the game is this, to see which player can place the most rockets onto the launch pad before it fires <laughs> just like that. Does that mean that I won? I think, I, I don't know. Well, I did. See, the rules oh. of the game are this. Whichever player places on the last rocket, when it fires, is the loser. And it is very nerve-wracking, because you never know when the rockets are going to be fired until it's too late. Now, the firing mechanism is one of these. You may have seen one of these before. It is a popping ball. You turn it inside out, place it onto a table, and then just wait for it to pop. Oh! Pop one into the base of your launch pad, and then you never know when it'll go. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we've given this a fingertips difficulty rating of one. Easy. Yes. Now, your launch pad base can be made from any shallow container. We are using just a margarine tub. And then you want to make it look more intergalactic for your space rockets. And a bit of silver paint does the trick. But a great fingertips top tip is to mix some PVA glue in with the paint and that way the paint will stick to your plastic tub. So give it a good mix round and then you can get painting. While Stephen's doing that, I'm going to show you how to make the actual launch pad. For this, all you need is a sheet of card. I'm going to use grey to go with the silver painted base. So draw around a dinner plate on the middle of your card all the way around and then cut it out. You can add some rivets using a black pen just to make it look a little bit more authentic. So I'll just add the finishing touches. And when your margarine tub is dried, you want to add a few rivets to that too to give it that special space station look. And now for the rockets. These are really easy. All you need is two triangular pieces of card, one with a slit at the bottom and one with a slit at the top. And then you just slot them together like that. Easy. Now, if you go to the Fingertips website and click on Fun, you'll find a template for the rockets that you can print off. The address is coming up soon. Then you want to paint your rockets and add on a few bolts in pen. And the nose cone is just a semicircle of card rolled into a cone shape and stuck on top. And when you've made ten or so rockets, you're ready to play the game. Here we go. Let's go, Steve-o. I really like this one. Right. The Fun Fingertips launch pad. Great fun to play. But definitely not oh. for the faint-hearted. You all right, Stevie? I think I need to lie down. Here on Fingertips, we try to come up with ideas for you to revamp stuff you can most probably find around your home. Yes, and today it's the turn of these boring old broken and chewed up pens. Not very inspiring, are they? But with a bit of Fingertips know-how, we're going to show you how to turn them from these into these totally transformed pucker pens. They look fantastic, don't they? And to make one, all you need is a piece of oven-baked clay, a skewer and a pen. Can I grab one of them? Well, that one do. Oh, look, it's chewed up, it's manky and it's broken. It's perfect. And we give Pucker Pens a fingertips difficulty rating of 
too, so why not give your pen a makeover? Start off with a ball of oven baked clay about this sort of size, and I'm going to make a jewelled pucker pen, so I only need one colour clay for now. Start by rolling the clay into a ball, then get your skewer and push that through the middle of the oven baked clay like so and then you need to start rolling the clay into a sausage shape. Now I'm going to try it for the stripy tiger effect like this one here and it's really easy to do. Once you've got your sausage shape there you just get some smaller bits of oven baked clay and just place them onto the larger one like this. Just get a few of these all the way along. There we go, a few more and then push them into the sausage and carry on rolling. Keep rolling your sausage out flat until it's about the same size as the inside inky bit of your old pen. Now you can pull the wooden skewer out and the best way to do that is to keep it flat on the surface and pull the skewer out straight so the clay doesn't bend. And we found these wooden skewers are about the same width as the inside inky bit of an ordinary ballpoint pen. And before you pull it all the way out, you need to close up one end so that inky bit won't slide all the way through the pen. So just give that a little pinch and round it off with your finger. And then you can pull the wooden skewer all the way out, like that. And now transfer your pucker pens onto a baking tray and cook them in the oven according to the instructions on the packet. And when it has cooked and cooled down, it will be hard like this. Now, you could leave the pen like this, it looks fine, but we think it looks a bit better with a little varnish. And the easiest way to do that to stop your fingertips getting dirty is put the skewer back into the pen, get your varnish, and cover the whole thing. There we go. And when you have covered the whole thing to leave it to dry, just push the skewer into some modelling clay like that. I've also given this one a lick of varnish and now I'm just adding some jewels using PVA glue to stick them on and you can use any design, it's up to you. Put on a brighter pink one on the end to complete my pattern and then you can leave that to dry in some more modelling clay on your skewer like that. And when it is dry, you can just add the inky inside bit of your boring old pen, push that in like that and your pucker pen is finished. And you can make other pucker pen designs by just using different shapes of oven baked clay pushed into the side. This Dalmatian one, that's a nice one. And also the leopard print design is pretty cool. Or add whatever you want to jazz up your pen. How about this elaborate flowered one? Or feathery version. The flowers and feathers were added after the pens have been baked. But it's up to you how you want to make your precious personalised fingertips pucker pen. Pucker! Got a minute? Yes, this is the part of the programme we show you how to make something in under a minute using bits and pieces you can find around your home. Today it is my turn to make. And it's my chance to tie. And this is all it takes, plus some very clean fingertips. This is brilliant. If you don't do this in a minute, I'm going to give you a real grilling. Uh, that's a clue. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? Yes. Three, two, one, go. OK, no problem. First of all, you push the bottle top into the piece of bread firmly like that. Then cut this lolly stick in half. Oh, oh. like that. Now take this half lolly 15 stick. 15 seconds. Push it into the bread. This is alright. It'll be alright. Keep going. Like 20 that. seconds have gone. That's okay. One more. You're definitely going to make this one. There, and then push it into the toaster. Stop that clock. Oh, 30 seconds. Go on, tell them what it is. Okay. It's a fingertips toast text. How good is that? <laughs> so you can actually write messages or draw patterns into a slice of bread just by pushing things into the bread and then toasting it and posting it across the table <laughs> like that. Thank you. Yeah. You could even write special messages to someone that you love. Ah, oh, Stephen, thanks. Oh. It always puts them up. <laughs> I'll toast to that. Well, that's all we've got time for today. If you want to make anything from the programme, just check out the Fingertips website. Address is on the screen now. And we'll see you again very soon for more Fingertips. Fingertips. Bye. See ya.